Hi, Andreas from Total here, and today we're going to learn how to build fully interactive applications in Total. Now, if you haven't watched the last video where we learned how to build dynamic websites with Total, I recommend watching that first. We have a link in the description here. So, last time we looked at this Turtle news site and we showed how to use a API. In this case, we use something called newsdata.io to fetch data. And then we use that data to render our newsfeed. So the data coming from the API was dictating what actually got rendered on our feed. Now, in a more general term, oh, in more general terms, we can say that for dynamic websites, we have data, and the data informs the UI through a process we call rendering. So whatever the data is, that's what dictates what our UI will be rendered. And when we build the UI, we set that up, those rules, right? Now, for interactive applications, we're adding another step. So in an interactive application, first we have our data. And data here can be many things. In total, it generally refers to either um, APIs, or it could be a variable that this component has, and we'll cover them a little bit today. Or it could be uh, coming from the URL. So different URLs with different parameters also have data in them. Um, but anyway, our application has data, and that data is used in the UI when we're rendering. We saw how we could use formulas to bind data to our UI. Um, the last step we're adding today is that we can now listen for user interactions in our UI, such as clicks or inputs. That will trigger an event, which is what we call a user event. And on that event, we can then perform one or more, one, <laughs> one or more actions um, that, among other things, can update our data. And you can see that forms sort of a nice little triangle here where we will render some UI, then the user will interact with the UI in some way, for example, click a button. That event might change one of our variables or refetch some of the data from a server, and as a result, the data will change, which will then cause the UI to render, and we end up with this loop, this user, this interaction loop. And that's what we're going to show how that works today in Total. So let's jump into an example. So let's look at a simple example here. We've got a dialogue component here, or dialogue element here on our site, and we want this to be toggled with a button, right? So we want a button that says show dialogue. When you click that, show the dialogue. When we click OK, we hide the dialogue, right? So in order to do that, as we learned from our uh, chart here, we got to start with the data. So what should the data look like for making this happen? And here I'm going to use a variable. Um, this is not really the kind of state we need to, or the kind of data we need to send to a server. We can keep this all inside the browser on the client's machine. So that's where variables really shine. Variables are really good for using for data that you only need while the application is running. So as soon as the application gets closed, uh, all the variables disappear, right? So we're going to uh, create a variable here. We're going to call it a show dialogue. And we are going to start with the value of false. No, sorry. We're going to start by setting it here, of course, to a formula, and which is going to be false. There we go. So that means we're not showing the dialogue, right? That's our default. We don't want to show it. Um, the next step is then actually using the show formula, as we uh, learned in the last video on this dialog, um, to actually bind that to the variable. So when the show uh, dialog variable is true, we should show the dialog. When it's false, which it is now, we should not show it. Let's have a look, and we can't see anything. So far, so good. Let's go and add a button to our component or to our page here. Um, I'm just going to pick a normal button, and I am going to change this text to show dialog. Okay. So what I want to happen is that when I click this button, I want to update the variable of show dialog to true, so we'll see the dialog. And to do that, I'm going to select the button, then go over here to events, and right here we can see our event panel. And if you haven't seen it before, it can look a little bit overwhelming because there's quite a lot of events that you can work with. Uh, we've sort of only expanded the top, um, the top two. They're the most common to use. Um, 
in this case, we want to react to a click event. So right here, when we click the click event, we'll see our workflow editor. The workflow editor lets us decide what happens when a given event occurs. In this case, it's the button click event. A workflow consists of one or more actions that's tied together, uh, and they'll be executed one at a time. So we can add an action to the list by clicking this little plus button. Right here, we see that the first one it suggests is we can set a variable, the variable show dialog. And that is actually exactly what we do. Now we can see there's a few things we can do here with actions, but for now, we're going to start, we're going to do this one. Um, now we need to set the value and I'm going to open up formula and I'm just going to pick true. So that's just the Boolean value true, right? Um, so what that means is that when we click the button, we're going to set show dialog to true. Um, let's go and see what happens when we run this in test mode and I'll click the dialog and we can see a few things here. First of all, that I screwed up my CSS a little bit. We can actually fix that relatively simple just by moving the button up uh, top, right? And the second thing we can see more importantly is that we're seeing the dialogue, right? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add this little okay. We're gonna add a click handler to that again. And right here, again, we're gonna set show dialogue. And this time we're gonna set it to false. Whoops, there we are. And then when we go into test mode and click this button, we can see that we can now toggle the dialogue on and off with these two buttons. Right. So what we learned here is that we start with the data from our variable. We render that to our UI. So depending on whether the show dialogue is true or false, we'll either render the dialogue or not. Then we have a user interaction where we click the show dialogue button. That triggers an event the event calls this action inside our workflow of updating the variable. And then the variable, gets, variable changed to true, our UI gets updated and show the dialog. And as a result for the UI being updated, we decide to close the dialog again, again, completing this circle once again. So this model, this circle of rendered data that gets rendered to the UI, events occurring based on user interactions and actions updating the data. This is fundamental to how Total works. And every interactive application you build in Total is going to follow this same pattern. So this was just a simple example showing how you can use events and workflows to create interactivity in your Total applications. Now, right here, all we did was show and hide a model or dialog, but this very same concept can scale up to massively complex applications. So please like and subscribe to this video if you want to see more like it. We've got a whole series coming out and we'll be uh, expanding a lot more on these concepts in the following videos in this series. Thank you very much.